Hi, I'm Andrew Poliak, CTO of Panasonic Automotive Systems America, and I want to take a little bit of time in this tech talk to describe some of the trends we see going on in automotive, and then a little bit about uh, my innovation philosophy. So first about the trends. Uh, one thing with that we see that's happening is definitely an acceleration towards what everyone refers to as the software-defined vehicle. But our take on it is a little different. So first, let's talk about the trend. The trend is the compute power is accelerating in the CPUs that are targeting automotive applications. So those CPUs are up integrating so much of the vehicle content, the interaction with the passengers and driver, the connection and integration of ADAS and even autonomous and piloting technologies that these processors are really becoming high performance compute platforms that are essentially the brains of the car. And those technologies, because they're now driving so much content, that means they have to have um, an evolution from the time the vehicle is sold until the time the vehicle's decommissioned. So that means this constant evolution of software and even in some cases hardware will continue to change as the vehicle progresses. So with these high performance compute, we see the use of um, integrating ADAS, integrating displays, integrating cameras, integrating all these sensors that will send um, information to this box that uses it to both, in some cases, pilot the vehicle and in some cases inform the occupants of the vehicle what's going on in the world around them or what's going on in the car. So Panasonic has always had this philosophy of know the driver, know the environment, know the vehicle, right? And this really becomes the platform that makes that happen. So some complexities around that is that not only is the vehicle platform computing power accelerating, but the need to have a lot of real-time information around about the world around them, both locally and potentially, you know, in the environment and in the cloud is very important. So I really want to talk about this trend towards leveraging cloud architectures for the vehicle environment. So we've been working on some things. We uh, Panasonic has joined the Sophie Alliance and the idea of making binary identical cloud native compute platforms. What does that mean? So if you can imagine, hardware is very high performance, but often very limited. And the acceleration of development of these vehicle platforms is making it often very difficult to have enough hardware at the time you're doing development. And then once you do the development, having the hardware to test and check that these safety use cases are accommodating because remember I said these boxes sometimes will be piloting the vehicle. So we've been exploring this idea that you could actually host uh, the equivalent of hardware on a server, for example, Amazon Web Services, and you could actually not only develop, but it would be binary identical. So not emulation, not simulation, but the code you develop for these platforms could actually run offboard in the cloud or migrate back and forth between the embedded system in the car and the cloud environment. So what benefits does this give you? Uh, one is that there's never enough hardware when you're developing these systems. So you can actually have developers developing on these um, environments that are binary identical. So the code they're writing will run right on the target. So that allows them to scale enough developers to be developing to launch these systems in time. It allows you to use and leverage developers from all over the world because you're not shipping hardware and sending it around. Uh, additionally, it allows you to massively scale your testing and your ability to really isolate any corner cases that could cause problems. So you could spin up a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand of these instances of these embedded targets, and you can test them all to make sure that there isn't any problems. And as you get into systems with mixed criticality, meaning you're driving safety use cases that could go to all the way to automotive safety integrity D, which is the highest level, you might wanna be able to make sure that these parallel testing can be done automatically. And these systems, as I mentioned, don't just launch and then you never touch again. 
they're living, breathing, evolving systems that will need uh, regular updates and even potentially regular interactions with the cloud that having these massively scalable tests are incredibly important. So, um, and then the, the last benefit too is that, as I just mentioned, you can start having these systems and I'll use an example of, think of your favorite music service or your favorite navigation in your portable device. Those systems are smart enough to download enough content locally to your phone or portable device that when you lose connectivity, you don't lose your navigation destination or you don't lose your favorite music. But when you have connectivity, maybe the music has a higher sound quality or maybe your navigation starts showing 3D map data or high resolution information about what lane you're in or information about traffic, road closures or other things up ahead. Take that exact analogy back to what could be happening in the car where they have neural processing and they can identify obstacles in the road or they can identify road conditions and they can use that AI to um, maybe optimize fuel economy or report back information to scale and create better map data or, or better routing information. Um, those solutions can then live locally when there's not a, you know, for example, 5G connection, or when the connectivity is strong enough, it can seamlessly interact with these backend cloud solutions. So uh, those are the type of things we're working on and one of the, one of the challenges we see. Um, the other thing that these high performance compute modules, you know, changing gears from this idea of the general software defined vehicle, but what experiences are you now going to see in this, these cars? So these high performance compute modules that Panasonic is designing handles tens of cameras um, that can be spread all around the car, uh, helping it do everything from interact with somebody when you're outside the vehicle to self park to driving and not just cameras, but all kinds of sensors and information being pulled into these high performance compute modules. And then driving a variety of displays because those displays can be everything from actual displays to transparent environments projected onto glass, whether that's augmented reality HUD or projectors projecting outside to people outside of the vehicle or interacting with the world around you, creating mixed reality or augmented reality displays on the glass where you can see you know, what's a point of interest around you or it can highlight and do what I refer to as comfort ADAS, highlighting information in the world around you that makes you more comfortable letting go of the wheel when you go into these autonomous modes. So these high performance compute modules drive literally tens of displays, just like the camera, where you may have instrument cluster, head up display, passenger display, main user and vehicle displays, camera monitoring systems that would be the replacement for mirrors on your side view mirrors with cameras and small displays that you can see your side view information, intelligent rear view mirrors that replace your standard rear view mirrors with cameras that give you a display that's connected to a camera that gives you a wider field of view so you have no blind spots. Back passenger displays with movies and music and even the best home theater you could imagine where it's actually got full Dolby Atmos and 30 speakers or more speakers. Just these great environments that really allow the vehicle to do what it's done, which is replace the second space in your life where the, you know, your home may be your first, work was second, you know, Third may be your vehicle and now it's getting to where your vehicle is actually probably one of the spots and spaces you use the most outside of your home with many of the people going to work from home. Um, so those are some of the things and some of the experiences we're launching with uh, these high performance compute modules and some of the technologies we're building around them with cameras, with projector style environments in the, on the glass and in the vehicle environment even doing things like maybe using your panoramic sunroof as a surface to uh, make a new environment. Uh, my kids, when they were small, loved, uh, they called it the fishies, but it was like a starry night scene with uh, music that was played. And imagine having that starry night scene or an aquarium environment projected onto your panoramic sunroof. These things can be done with these high performance compute modules.
looking at just the complexity that I just described, it's impossible for one company to do that completely on their own. So where Panasonic is being, um, I think, the best in our industry is around not only the integration, but the use of strategic alliances and working closely with companies to know that we can't go it alone. Um, we need these close collaborations in what we can do jointly to create these great experiences. So um, on, the, on the one part, on the integration, often people look at innovation and don't really think of integration as such an important part of innovation. Uh, in, many, in many parts of automotive, the silicon we're selecting, the operating systems we're selecting, the sensors and other devices we're selecting come from a different world. They come from consumer. They may be developed for automotive, but often the investment in silicon is so expensive to create a new piece of silicon, those vendors typically have an idea of what's trying to be done with them when they're creating that silicon. So one of the most important things a tier one can do is be very good at integrating those technologies to make sure that that silicon runs as intended in an automotive environment, addressing the heat and uh, general thermals and EMI. Um, also making sure that we're uh, doing things like fast boot and addressing automotive safety levels that are required, but then integrating the software, integrating third parties, even as OEMs are taking more responsibility for that software, uh, we think of it as three approaches. You could be moving to something that's more of um, asking a tier one to be a build to print vendor, which we are incredibly capable in already doing that technology today. Asking a tier one to be a full service tier one where we do everything, pull the strategic alliances we need, integrate the third party applications, develop the HMI. We do that and have successfully launched tens of millions, hundreds of millions of vehicles on the road with that type of, of model. And, but I think where the industry is going is with this need to have a constant interaction with the vehicle platform and, and uh, apply new software and experiences to the car, even post-sale, OEMs are realizing that's part of their role. So we talk about things like build the platform. And this is kind of taking, allowing the OEM to build more uh, HMI and user experience elements where they know their customer, they know the vehicle environment and the brand that they're trying to uh, show. And they can add that onto the high performance compute that Panasonic can provide with the operating system, a lot of the core technologies already pre-integrated that allows them to really innovate on top. So I go back to this and just really say from a philosophy perspective, I think where we do and where we're seeing a lot of the new innovation is really that level of integration. And some people say it like a dirty word, right? Oh, integration, it's just integration. But that's where the rubber hits the road between software and hardware and how you integrate that as well as third party components. And that's where I think a lot of systems that are being developed now have the potential to fall apart without a very strong integrator capability. Those are some of my management philosophies, some of the things we're working on. So Panasonic has talked about uh, for the last five, six years about our strategic alliances, recognizing that consumer is coming into automotive. So if you uh, look at our announcements going back even to 2018, where we pre-integrated a hybrid Alexa, a hybrid Google Assistant, we've constantly been working with Apple CarPlay and projection modes, including driving multiple screens, using Siri, Sirens, Sensory, all these different speech agents and assistants and integrating them into a vehicle environment. We've also talked about our um, collaboration with Google and being their reference design, not only for their automotive embedded operating system, but also their automotive services. Um, now you're gonna see a lot more about our engagement, not just with Google, but with Amazon, with Apple, and with others. So that core platform level is what I mean by build the platform, or we'll pre-integrate the BSP, the operating system, the, the core services, 
that then allow you to take people who know Android or know Linux or know all these other operating systems and environments and build applications and HMI and user experiences on top of them. So we've been you know, building this uh, relationship and ecosystem to really enable that next generation of platforms. So uh, I think I've gone well over my time. I could keep going forever because I love this technology. I love the space. I love what's going on in it. Uh, but thank you for listening and thank you for uh, joining my tech talk.